Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to our 20th session, alhamdulillah, of our morning series, uh, morning reflections on the 99 names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering the names of Al Raqib, Al Shahid, and Al Haq, uh, names that uh, have the meanings of the all observant, the watchful, the witness, and the truth. So, inshallah, to begin with Al Raqib and Al Shahid. Uh, each of Allah's names nurtures uh, different, you know, nurtures in us a uh, different way uh, and teaches us to be aware of their manifestations in our lives. And uh, they open us up to different paths by which we connect to Allah. So uh, they bring out different things in us, but they make us aware in different, uh, different ways, shapes and forms and help us to uh, grow as, as humans. And so these names essentially teach us how to it attain ihsan or excellence um, in our everyday lives. Uh, when we're you know, at home, even scrolling through social media or if we're cooking, um, we're driving somewhere, uh, or maybe you know, just going for a walk or just doing a, an errand or whatnot, uh, or even when we just greet someone, we meet some people, um, whether people we know or just strangers on the street. Um, Ar-Raqib is the one who is watchful over all of that, is the one who watches over and is observant of all of that. And a shahid is the one who is the witness. So a raqib is the one that watches over our creation and, and uh, the creation as a whole um, out of care and uh, looks after them, uh, just as if you would think uh, in a sense of how a parent might look after uh, a child or a caretaker may look after someone that they have good intentions um, uh, in an ideal sense, they have a good, good intentions um, for the well-being of that whom they watch over. Uh, they're not just doing it like uh, because someone told them to and now they're stuck with this. They're doing it out of compassion, out of love. Uh, and Ash-Shahid is the witness that, uh, that one, the one who witnesses all that occurs in this life and in all of existence uh, and will act as the ultimate witness on the day of recompense or a day of judgment. So all of this witnessing is not in vain. This witnessing has a higher purpose. Uh, Allah's witnessing or Allah shahada is a result of the observation. So they, they're both working mutually that this, uh, these names of Ash-Shahid and al uh, and Allah's knowledge of the inner and the outer and his intimate acquaintance with all that occurs is uh, it's a result of this is, is comp comprised within this witnessing. Um, it is it is a holistic witnessing that sees beyond just the superficial uh, and a holistic observance which sees beyond the, the superficial. And Allah, when you think of someone who's observant, who's uh, watching out of care, who's looking after you, they, they need to know that creation. They need to know what they're looking after, its needs, whatever its dependencies may be. Uh, its predispositions, different things like that, so that it can best provide that care, whoever it may be. And in this case, as Allah, Allah knows each of us and each of our hearts and what's in our hearts, and that Allah is closer to us than our own jugular veins. And uh, thinking that this this watchfulness might sound kind of odd or sound kind of you know intimidating or whatnot, but to be able to see it from a lens of compassion shows that uh, at the end of the day, it's something that uh, indicates that Allah has a vested interest in this creation and has a deep concern for this creation to be able to uh, assign himself, to assign this name, to lift up this name of being watchful, of being uh, a witness. And so these names teach us that Allah is watching over us all the time um, out of care uh, for us and not, not from a sense of just trying to hyper-regulate or helicopter parent us or anything like that, but uh, out of a sense of care and compassion. But uh, as I mentioned, sometimes this connotation of watchfulness over someone uh, or over uh, us has very negative connotations or maybe scary in a sense, but to be able to look at it for the holistic purpose that it is, that uh, Allah is watchful over us because Allah cares about us. Um, there would be no other reason to, to really lift that up uh, and Allah's uh, mindfulness of us, even in the mundane, as evidence to that. So when we know that Allah is a shaheed, uh, as a witness, that should inspire us as well to be uh, even more vigilant that if Allah is watching over us, if Allah is witnessing over us, that we too should be witnesses over ourselves. We too should be observant over that which we do and that which we say and which we think. Um, and we, 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 it should inspire us because we understand that everything Allah witnesses in this world will eventually come to be laid bare. 
um, on the day of recompense, on the day of judgment, that this is not in vain, that this is all something that will be uh, taken account to. And so when we live with these names, I want to recognize that we are not alone, that uh, regardless of where we may be, regardless of where we may be, that uh, we are in this, in this life, um, we are uh, ultimately always under the umbrella of creation and uh, watched over by Allah, that uh, we may feel isolated in one part of the world or in one space, at the end of the day, Allah is the one who is watching over us. Uh, we want to watch over ourselves, and uh, we want to try our best to try and impress Allah in the way that Allah loves, and, and, and in this case, with these names of witnessing and watchfulness, uh, in a way that is done as if you were watching over someone um, or if you're watching over something and they 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 don't give you any trouble they don't they don't cause you stress they don't cause these things so we want to try to do that we know that we will slip and fall in our humanity but we want to try to do our best uh, and to uh, impress Allah in this way to that we can be the best that we can be um, and we want to be watchful over that which we uh, are given uh, and whom we are responsible for so thinking about your families thinking about uh, the things that have been given to you in this life, the so small little things, whether it's your phone or, you know, little blessings like that. So being mindful of what you have, but also being mindful uh, and watchful and observant, giving it care, giving it uh, that same attribute that Allah gives you to uh, these things to be able to be mindful of them, not for the purpose of falling in love with that object, but as a uh, prescription and duty that has been given to you from Allah and in the spirit uh, of Allah's uh, divine names of Ar-Raqib and ar -Rashid. So inshallah, these names help us become more watchful and caring, not just for ourselves, but for other people around us and ultimately allow us to realize that this is the kind of watchfulness and even more so and caringness and then care that Allah is, uh, is doing so with us as well from, from far away. And so the next thing we have uh, for today, the last name is Al-Haq. Uh, Al-Haq is uh, literally translated as the truth. So Allah is the truth, uh, the undoubtedly real. Um, this truth is one that transcends time and it's everlasting and consistent. So Allah is the truth, uh, not just in, in the literal sense and the definitive sense, but uh, holistically, Allah is the truth uh, in his essence, in his divinity, in his lordship. And remember, lordship is not just one we think with the, it's like a master and a slave kind of a relationship or uh, someone who owns someone in a property sense, but also in a caretaker uh, in, in a sustaining, nurturing sense. Uh, and in the names of Allah, uh, there's that truth. So Allah, uh, as we mentioned, um, you know, as Allah had stated uh, in, in a hadith, um, that hadith Qudsi, that uh, I have forbidden oppression for myself. I believe it was the hadith that said that, you know, Allah has forbidden oppression um, for himself. Uh, similarly, Allah is the opposite of falsehood. Um, so falsehood is removed from the equation when it comes to Allah as well. Um, there's a dua of the Prophet really giving meaning and shedding light to this, uh, this name of Al-Haq, uh, in which it says that, oh Allah, all, all the praises are for you. You are the Lord of the heavens and the earth, um, and all praises are for you. You are the maintainer of the heaven and the earth and whatever is in them. All praises are for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. You are the truth, and your word is truth. Your word uh, is truth and your promise is truth and the meeting for, with you is truth and the paradise is truth and the hellfire is truth and the hour is truth. Oh Allah, I surrender myself to you and I believe in you and I depend on you and I repent to you with your evidences uh, and I stand against my opponents to leave the judgment for those who refuse my message. Oh Allah, forgive me my sins that I did in the past or will do in the future, and also the sins I did in the secret or in public. You are my only God whom I worship, and there is none, uh, no other God worthy of worship. Um, and so this is a hadith of the Prophet so just to show that aspect of that truth, that Allah's word is truth, that Allah is truth, that Allah's promise is truth, um, the meeting with Allah is truth, the paradise is truth, the punishment or the fire is truth and the time of recompense is truth. So looking at the sense that it's a holistic kind of haq, it's not just a singularity, it, it, there's so much that goes beyond it that's in a singularity of al haq, but it had it transcendence, it transcends um, all of our uh, concepts when we think about it. So we are what we want to realize a creation of al haq. We are a creation of the ultimate truth and as such it is a part then of our worship to Allah to, uh, to worship Allah, um, who is al-Haq, 
uh, with what we have in this life in truth uh, and to be sincere lovers uh, of truth, even if it is against or with, uh, ourselves or even if it's something that doesn't benefit us. So if Allah is the truth, then what Allah promises is the truth. What Allah gives is the truth. And if we believe Allah is the truth, then we believe that Allah's speech or Allah's revelation in the Quran is the truth. Uh, and it's teachings for our purpose, our return to Allah, our accountability, our invocations for justice, why we have to work uh, towards these. Um, th these are all uh, truth. And so what is also lifted up from these is that we have to do our, our side of the uh, of the of the equation as well. We have to work towards these things if we believe that these are truth, because these all call for us to be in a state of action wherever we may be. Um, so we've got to work towards them. Uh, Imam al Ghazali said that realizing this name makes a person so absorbed absorbed in the truth that they have room for nothing else. Um, and so you have the example of so many Muslims uh, and you know famous folks in in, in the past who've come. Uh, and, and are seekers of truth that, uh, you know, just feel like they, they're, they're, that they dedicate their life completely to this. And when we say that, you know, we, we, that when we're seekers of the truth, uh, we are not just folks who are just on a journey, just trying to, you know, be mystical and find uh, the truth. And that's the only thing about our life. But uh, up, up along that journey, if we choose to take it, whatever it may be, as seekers of the truth, we are people that, uh, if we believe in Allah as the truth, our worship will be truthful and our worship is not just that which is confined to a prayer mat. Our worship is that which is holistic in which uh, we, we thank Allah, we work towards Allah, we work for Allah uh, outside the prayer mat, in the ways of the community, in different spaces. And so recognizing this as well. Um, and so as we live with this name, inshallah, we want to lift up that we want to be seekers of and people who uphold truth, uh, whether it is against ourselves or it is for us. Um, we want to verify information that comes out and we're living in an age of uh, quote unquote fake news. And so we want to verify information, especially when it comes to matters of faith and to other people, um, but also put in the work to seek out the truth. If somebody has been wrong, we want to be upholders of truth. If somebody, uh, you know, is, is, has, is being marginalized or hurt, uh, given false accusation or anything like that, we want to be able to stand up for that person. But if someone uh, is, is also being kind of on the other side, that being marginalized and hurt, um, and 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 you know, the the truth would be the one that would free them. Uh, be advocates for truth. You don't have to be a lawyer to you know stand up for anybody's truth. Uh, you just be with that person and and, and listen to them. So be uh, people who, who who verify the information, but, but seek out that truth uh, in in the spirit of al haq uh, take comfort in the fact that Allah is that uh, we may be deceived by the world around us. There may be so many trap holes and things like that that get us, but recognize that Allah is al-haq. want to be truthful in all dimensions uh, of truth. We want to be callers of truth and people of truth. Uh, the Prophet lifted up in the hadith that arrogance is the rejection of truth and looking down uh, on others. Uh, that, that's what arrogance is. It's a rejection of truth and looking down on others. So uh, when we uh, look at when we're not truthful, there's also that arrogance that we think we know better. We think we can game the system. We think we can game Allah uh, and, and circumvent by just telling a lie or just kind of going around this. So we need to be watchful of ourselves, especially in these last 10 nights of Ramadan, to be mindful of that which we say, because if Allah is al-haq, are we being people of haq? Uh, and lastly, there's a supplication of the companions of Umar radiallahu anhu that said, Oh Allah, show me the truth as truth and guide me to it. Show me the false as false and guide me to avoid it. So inshallah, we take these names uh, of al-haq, the truth, and al-raqib, uh, the watchful, the observant, and al-shaheed, uh, the witness, to make us more accountable, inshallah. We ask Allah to make these names uh, a source for us to become more accountable of ourselves, of our actions, of that which we say, that which we see, that which we hear, and that which we think, um, and that all of these be in sync, that when Allah watches and witnesses over us, that is, is so, uh, and it, it is observed in the sense that we are exuding uh, truth, that we are living into this truth in the spirit of al-haq, and that similarly for the rest of the creation, we can be individuals that uh, are watchful in a mindful sense that we're caring for them, we're concerned with their welfare, and also we are individuals in our community concerned with upholding and seeking out 
and maintaining the truth. Inshallah, Ameen. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.